that Dutch was going to go on to pick up W as you did that before. What are your initial impressions, impressions of him just when you got to see him out on the grass or even in the classroom? Yeah, uh, first impressions, we were obviously uh, doing a lot of field work and weight room work, or uh, I'm sorry, class work and weight room work. Uh, he's super bright, super sharp. Uh, he's picking it up quick. Um, I think it's a really good time to get a feel for the system. Um, and Luke's doing a really good job. Luke and Andrew are doing a really good job pulling him along. And um, I think the cool part is it's new for all of us. So we're all kind of learning together. And uh, so far, so good. And what's it been like to just be back in Chicago? a city that obviously meant a lot to you through college, and now you're getting a chance to come back here. It's been great. Yeah, I, uh, I love Chicago. Um, glad it, wor it worked out, and I'm here. Uh, my wife was, was super excited, too, so it's good to see some old buddies. Uh, I got a chance to go back to Northwestern for a practice. Um, yeah, it feels like home. Coach Eber Blues talked about you and Nate sort of supporting Justin, helping him through this process. How much do you see that as part of your role as the backup quarterback? Yeah, I think that's big in any uh, in any quarterback room. Um, you know, you're, it's a, everybody says they got a tight knit room, but I think quarterback's a little different, right? There's only one on the field at a time, and um, there's not many guys that have done it. You know, obviously you have your coaches and other teammates, but um, I've always thought it's good to have guys uh, in your foxhole, so to speak, and uh, be able to bounce ideas off them and uh, and be there for them. Yeah. What did you learn from previous quarterback? Yeah, I think there's so much there. I think uh, you try to learn from everybody. Uh, I've bounced around quite a bit, so you know, even even the good ones that I've played with, you know, Peyton, Drew, um, you know, Ryan Tannehill, um, even the younger guys, I've always tried to try to pick something up from somebody. And I think the thing you learn is everybody's different, and um, they do things differently. There's no no one way to do it. It's like anything else. Um, Got to kind of figure out your personality, um, what makes you good. Um, and accentuate your strengths and, and work on your weaknesses. But, um, yeah, I don't think there's there's any one-size-fits-all. What was unique about Peyton and about Drew in the room in particular? Yeah, I think, uh, you know, there's so many things um, in the room, you know, that they were, they were older. They're at a different point in their career, right? So I remember going to Denver, and I was like, man, I, I'm not making it. <laughs> um, but, yeah, I think you, you try to um, internalize that and – and figure out what, what makes sense for you at your point in your career. So what can you take from them and apply to your game or, or how you go about things? Um, for me, I wasn't trying to be Peyton. I wasn't trying to, trying to be Drew. But um, if I could pick up a thing here or there um, and apply it to my, my own game, then it would be in good shape. Do you have yes. any tendencies from Justin that they maybe did that you're like, that guy's got it? Yeah, I think there's just certain traits, um, you know, intelligence, uh, being accurate with the ball, I think those there's there's certain prerequisites you got to have to play at a high level, um, and Justin's got it. I mean, he's got got all the tools, um, just you know around him. Um, we got to play well around him and and give him a chance. But yeah, he's he's got everything. You had one other free agent visit before you signed here, right? Vegas. Yeah. What made you want to come here? Uh, there was quite a bit of you know, I, it's it's kind of a crazy time. Um, it's like high school recruiting, and I, I really don't even know what I'm, I was doing with it. Um, but, you know, it was, it was definitely uh, – I felt at home here. Um, I, I liked what Coach Eberflus told me. Um, I liked the direction of the club. Uh, it was a good opportunity to be with Justin, be in that room. Um, and I really like the scheme that Luke Luke's incorporating, and uh, I think I can play my best football in this scheme too. So. Trying to expand upon that, what have you learned about, about Luke both from – to kind of build a system and then also just as a teacher to you guys in the room of, of being able to operate? Yeah, it's, it's been great. Um, you know, the system's kind of, it's bounced around the league quite a bit and there's different variations of it all over. So it's cool to see uh, Luke put his own twist on it um, and carry some things over that have um, kind of been patterns of success throughout the league, but also have his little nuances. Um, you know, for quarterbacks, I think it's, it's an easy system to play fast <laughs> in. Um, you know, it gives you a chance to run the ball well because I think you look around the league and teams generally that run it well, um, you know, those are the teams playing December, January. Um, yeah, there's nuances to the footwork and, and some things I'm getting the, getting the hang of and uh, thankful for Luke and Andrew because they're, they're helping us big time. What makes it, what makes it easy to play fast in? Uh, you know, you, you can lean on the wide zone, the, the zone scheme. Um, 
the play pass lets young players, um, be it quarterbacks, running backs, receivers, um, play quickly. And uh, yeah, I think it's, um, I've always kind of, you know, I've bounced around, I've been in different schemes, but I've always looked over the fence and be like, eh, I want to play in that again, so. Is it too early to get a sense of what type of play caller you might be? Uh, Luke, you're saying? Yeah, yeah. Luke. Yeah, um, yeah I, don't, I don't know, I haven't, you know, we'll see. Um, you know, we're just installing the offense. It's it's only May, so. Um, but so far, so good. Is there a difference between when you've been with veteran quarterbacks from Kirk all the way up to, to Drew and, you know, guys who are older um, mm -hmm. to where Justin is right now, just in terms of the communication aspect in the room? I know Luke said that he felt Justin's biggest growth this offseason was that he can communicate with him better now as a young guy. I mean, do you notice that? Is there, like, kind of a difference for, like, seeing a younger quarterback in the room? Sure. Yeah, I, th I think you have to play, and Justin's played. I mean, other, otherwise it's all new to you, and you don't have much you can, um, you know, uh, speak on as far as game experiences. So um, there's nothing like game experiences for a young player. And, uh, you know, it's not always great. You know, you don't always you know, set the world on fire your first time playing. Um, but, yeah, I think uh, I think it, it's fun to see kind of Justin get, get the hang of the system and um, talk ball and, um, go back and forth with Luke, and I, you know, again, it's early, but I think we're in a good spot. Are there anything specific? Are there any specifics that Justin asks you to kind of keep your eye on when he's on the field? When he come up and say, "Hey, what did you see here?" Are there anything specifically that he's asking you to kind of keep an eye on when he's on the field? Yeah, I think that's that's you know, as we're starting up now, I think that's um, part of practice, right? You get through a set, you say, "Hey, you know, what did you see out there?" And um, yeah, it's just normal talk back and forth, but. Um, yeah, like I said, there's certain nuances that are new to me in this system, too, so we're, we're growing through it together. Um, but, yeah, that's certainly part of it. I can't, couldn't give you, like, one, one thing here or there, but um, that's kind of day-to-day for us. A couple more. Remember, what, do you, what do you consider your strengths as a, a QB2? Uh, well, strengths, uh, as a player, you know, I think, I, uh, I think I'm a play-pass quarterback um, and get the ball in my hand quickly. Um, and get, get everybody lined up and on the same page uh, in a timely fashion. Um, and then the other part of being a backup is uh, being there for the guy that's playing and, and being his guy and, um, you know, not giving him too much, but giving him what, what he, exactly what he needs. You know, I think um, you don't want to be a guy with all these opinions. Um, and uh, I think that's part of it too, right? You're just figuring out your teammates and um, how can you contribute to make uh, the Bears the best team they can be. In your experience, can this can what can a scheme get receivers open where another might not, or is that totally on players? Uh, no, I think I, I mean it's a players' league, right? Um, so you, you got to have the players execute, and that's our job. Um, but yeah, I think uh, I think there's certain things that give players, you know, put them in put them in spots, advantageous <coughs> spots, um, to either get open or make plays, and that's just that's football, that's offense, defense, so. Um, you know, like I said, it's early for us installing the scheme, um, but I'm thrilled right now. I think uh, I'm learning a lot, and uh, we're in good shape. Trevor, what's that about to you about the pass catching core so far? Uh, uh, guys can separate. I think they're, you know, it's I know it's OTAs, but you see guys and they're, uh, they're kind of twitched up, and um, it's fun to see. I think uh, young guys that are that are hungry to learn and um, can catch the ball. So. Um, that's what you look for. Again, you know, we'll see in, in camp and preseason when we got to work, you know, work versus bump. And um, there's that physical component of the game that, that you uh, can't wait to get to. But, um, yeah, I'm excited about it.